Welcome everyone to Matthew's Random Overviews. This is a sub-series of my random review show where I cover things I can't properly review for various reasons. As you can see, my level is a bit low to thoroughly review this game. Before I get started, I'd like to apologize to the following people. Forever Kugi, aka Momo, Metal Samus, aka Yuki, and Andy John DJ as J. Vance Pitt. I had to ditch the footage I used with you guys because its audio wasn't compatible with Premiere, and I decided I was going about things all wrong. For example, I decided not to record the audio with the gameplay. So, now that that's out of the way, uh, roll the thing I don't like having on the show, but I find kind of cool anyway, story writer. Fantasy Star Online was the first ever console-based MMORPG, paving the way for several cancelled MMORPGs and console ports. Home, which is basically a glorified chat service that which was a second life, console ports of Final Fantasy XI, which was not only outdated by 14 but also plays better on the PC, Fantasy Star Universe, which doesn't even have a private server to keep playing like PSO because Sega shut down the servers, and even if it did, there's no way to play the console version on a private server, Free Roads, which also plays better on a PC, DC Universe Online for PS3 and PS4, Dragon Quest X, which is only available in Japan, Fantasy Star Online 2, which is not only going to be for Vita and iOS aside from PC with no actual console version like its predecessors, and might not come ever out ever in the West. I'm only going to cover episode 1 as episodes 2 and 4 kind of require higher levels to play properly. And episode 3 is a card game for the GameCube, but it doesn't exist, unlike some other episode 3's given. The story starts on the colony ship Pioneer 1 having established a colony on the planet Regal. Eventually, a second ship, Pioneer 2, arrives and tries to establish contact, only for something to go horribly wrong and an explosion occurs in the central dome on Regal. It's up to you, the player, a customized character selection out of three classes, three races, and two genders to solve the mystery of the exploded dome, the angry and later mutated animal life, robots, dark creatures, the fate of Principal Tigerwell's daughter, Red Red Rico, and an evil being who is basically like the devil himself, sealed inside the spaceship hundreds of miles under the surface of the planet. The gameplay is fairly basic. You have a normal attack, a power attack, and an attack with special effects similar to the power attack, and if you time any of them right, you can chain up the three combo attacks. The other basic spells are called techniques in these, the Fantasy Star series. 
Um, there's three tiers of ice, fire, and electric spells, a healing spell, a status effect cure spell, a revival spell, an attack boost spell named Shifta, which is one of the words from this series that I use as a censorship for the SH word. Not the SH word of the have up at the end because that's not cuss word, it's just shut up. I mean, even poor kids allow shut up in that one clip of Knuckles saying shut up. Shut up! Anyway, um, there's also uh, the, the defense buff, uh, enemy debuffs for either attack and defense, and a temporary return to quest hub spell. Cast, previously known as Androids in Fantasy Star series, cannot use any of these in spite of their name. As far as item goes, you have the mate series of items which are like potions, fluid which recover technique points, which replace mana points in Fantasy Star, because Fantasy Star is, you know, fantasy in space. Antidote and Antiparalysa is pretty self-explanatory. Soul Atomizer, which recovers on all status conditions. I think it applies to the entire team. Moon Atomizers, which are revive fallen uh, teammates, much like the revival technique. Star Atomizers, which heal everyone's hit points completely. Telepipes, which are also return you to the quest to wipe the technique. Trap Vision, which slows you hidden traps, usually explosives. The Elusive Escape Doll, which revives you instantly should you fall in combat. Grinders, which increase weapon and attack values, as well as items that can boost your stats. Just a little bit. There are three uh, tiers of certain items, such as the Grinders, Fluids, and Mates, Mono, Die, and Try. And there's probably more random items that you can find in each episode, but those were basically all there was in episode 1. Um, actually, I don't think the ones that boosted your stats existed in episode 1 as far as I can tell. Now let's go over the various races and classes. We have humans, newmans, and casts. Humans are your standard general bread and butter stats general stat race as always. For some reason, female humans cannot be hunters, but female humans can. Now, new men are basically alien elves, because as the name of the franchise suggests, as I said earlier, it's fantasy. In space! Or, in other words, it's more like a mix of classic fantasy and sci-fi. The stark female Newman hunter actually kind of reminds me of a rogue or a thief, huh? Cats are sapient androids, so as I mentioned before, can't use magic for some reason, even though they started calling casts. But they are instead able to lay traps, which is something that I guess is unique to them. There are three classes, Hunter, your basic melee class, Ranger, which of course as the name suggests are best used with ranged weapons, and Force, which are basically your basic spellcaster class. But you could just tell that by looking, couldn't you? That's definitely an upside to limited character customization this game. You know who is what class just by looking at them, and it definitely helps you put together a balanced team. Or party, as they're called in this game. Um, actually, there are certain aesthetic items, or how's that word, that, um, can cover up your class like robes, though. It's kind of annoying, really. Another interesting thing worth mentioning is that different genders have different base stats and stat growth. Uh, just the class and class, gender, and race combinations, they all have different base stats and stat growth. I don't even know what, what exactly is the deal with the gender differences, especially because, you know, people would be more inclined to play a gender that they are, or, you know, sometimes people would rather play a gender that they're attracted to. You know, there's various reasons for that, obviously, not just, you know, the one that you're thinking of right now. Also, another thing regarding limited customer character customization is that only human males get cat ears. Sorry, cat girl lovers. You get a more properly dressed Kami or Super Saiyan instead. I'm certainly not complaining about the fact that males get cat ears. 
want. As far as weapons go, for hunters you get sabers, swords, daggers, partisans, which are basically lances, or um, pole arms, I mean, with the spear at the end. As slicers, which are basically like ranged versions of melee weapons, I guess. Katanas, double sabers, claws, gloves, which are basically unarmed, and twin swords. For rangers, there's handguns, machine guns, or mech guns, as they're called, rifles, uh, shots, or rather shotguns, and launchers, which are either grenade launchers or rocket launchers. I'm pretty sure they're grenade launchers because that's what they're called in the Fantasy Star Universe. For forces, there's just kins, rods, and wands. Not really a wide selection there. You probably want a gun though because the yeah, glass cannon sort of deal. I mean, because most classes can equip weapons, but for other classes, so yeah, you should definitely carry a gun if you're a force. The rarer a weapon is, the more powerful it is. So you definitely want rarer weapons as you move along and the game. For armor, you have armor and frames, which are some of which have special aesthetic effects in the field, apparently. And there's also barriers and shields, which are worn on your arm and can be really freaking annoying if you get attacked. I don't think there's any way to manually block with them either. Units are equipped to armor or frames that will give you a small stat boost or have certain special effects that actually do things as opposed to aesthetic effects uh, of certain frames of armor, such as make all hidden traps visible in a room as soon as you enter it. Very useful stuff. In addition, you get this tiny robot assistant thing called a mag, which will float by your shoulder or after they evolve a couple times shoulders, depending on which form they evolve into. See, feeding mags will increase the stats they can boost, and once they get to a certain level by feeding them, they will evolve and they will give you small boost under certain conditions, as well as giving you access to the always awesome photon blasts, which once the photon blast meter is full, will avoid the floor with most types of enemies, except for the bigger ones and the stronger ones also bosses. There are several types of mag, which, much like the old knee pads from Digimon or most Digimon video games, which will, will evolve in their base stats. I mean, just knee pads in general, you know. Combat in this game is a bit stiff. Even if you can manage to chain combo attacks, it still winds up being less than fluid. Certain weapons can attack faster than others, but that doesn't help a whole lot either. If you keep getting attacked, you'll actually be unable to retaliate until you move out of the way. So this is bad if you manage to get surrounded. In fact, this goes for your enemies as well. If you keep attacking them rapidly enough, they'll be completely unable to launch an attack against you. <sighs> Ugh. Exploration is a bit limited. You have the lobby, which is where you'll first go when you log in. And there's also a couple of alternate versions of the lobby, including a couple of Mass Effect 3 ending lobbies. When, and when I think our episode 2 lobby, and then there's the episode 3 lobby, which is um, the casino lobby. Soccer lobbies, which some of the many Sega references, though I think it's just Choo Choo Rocket. I could be wrong though. Episode 2's lobby also has a jukebox, and Episode three lobby has a jukebox, which has also got some more of the Sega references. Unfortunately, it can't be used on the PC. You have to use a GameCube copy of PSL Episode 1 and 2 or Episode 3. Additionally, you can find music CDs like this one, again, more Sega references. It's a good song, but once I use it, it's gone, so that's quite the dilemma. 
I think I'm just going to save it for when I eventually fight the last boss of episode 4. I have no idea what that is, though. Um, also, the episode 3 lobby has these trading cart, the trading of, of thingies here, and but you obviously can't use those in any episode other than episode 3, especially not the PC versions. Once you create a party, which absolutely requires a party name for some stupid reason, you will arrive in one of the two city areas. Episode 2 has a different one, but Episode 4 is just basically the same as Episode 1's, but the places you can explore on Ragol are not the same. Just like Episode 2. Here uh, you have the mission counter. It, it's fairly self-explanatory. Most people play this toward the future mission to grind levels because of the boss rush. In fact, I'm gonna go grab some help and show you all the bosses of Episode 1. This is the forest area, home to boomers, wolves, and the mascots of Fantasy Star Online, Rappies. This is the forest's boss, Dragon. That is its name. And it's a dragon because, you know, fantasy. And space! Thankfully, the Fantasy Star Universe actually had more original names for their dragon bosses. Next is the caves, home to creatures like sharks, which aren't actual sharks, nano-dragons, grass assassins, which I like to call for assassins, and stuff like that. The boss of the caves is the role. That isn't an actual foreign language. The thing has two forms, mask and no mask. Yeah, it's not really that great of a boss. When <laughs> you fight on a raft, you can't really use melee weapons most of the time. And I even tried using a party zam because, you know, it's like a spear, but it just doesn't work. Thirdly is the mine. Lots of robots, such as the Glitchic, which keep falling down. I, not to, shall knock you all down! Oh, seriously, they keep falling down. Can dine these annoying flying things that cast electric spells at you. Sino beats, Sino gold, and Garanzas. I don't even know how to pronounce that. The boss is a computer called Roll Opt, possibly a reference to Mother Brain from Fantasy Star 2. No, not the Metroid Mother. Oh God, no, not 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 that one. Oh no. Volop also has a second form, and if you're in front of the rocket launchers when you start this part, take my advice, run! The last area of episode 1 is the ruins, which is basically a giant spaceship millions of miles under the earth as I mentioned before. Here you'll find all kinds of dark attribute monsters such as the minions, claws, dull sabers, Dark Beltras, Chaos Sorcerers, Chaos Bringers, and the ever-annoying Dark Gunners. The final boss is a godlike entity thing known as Dark Fowls, whose name my subconscious constantly thinks has a T sound, and is my censorship for the F word. He has three phases. The first phase involves attacking these things called Darvins before he actually appears properly. The second story starts with him bursting out from under a pillar and he'll start shooting dark rats as you attack him. The final phase has him moving around a lot more and you have to wait till he slows down in order to attack. This form definitely has the most devastating attack so you want to be careful to get out of the way when he's starting to charge one. If you remain too close to him I think he does a bit of area damage or something, I'm not entirely sure about that. Now, an interesting thing to note is that he can't properly be killed as he has no mortal body and has to possess an existing mortal body to exist on the big plane. But what was the body he possessed? Well, that's up for you to find out. I'm Matthew, I feel like I'm missing something still. Until next time, stay tuned.
Call of Duty 40k, you get a wolf. The wolf will act like a real wolf and hunt its prey just like a real wolf. This is rocket science level technology.